well, it's 11 o'clock now. I guess I'd better get this video made and post it, eh? It's been a good day. Been a little bit difficult. Uh, my wife Mary and I are sick. Mm. Yeah. That's fun. Uh, it's just another wave of life, right? I don't know what the hell I'm going to talk about. I came home from work about 4 o'clock, I guess. Yeah, about 4. And, uh, laid down in bed with her. Mm. Mm. Basically been in bed all night. Fun stuff. No clue what I'm going to talk about. But, I made this commitment to make one new video every day and post it. And posting has been kind of difficult. Sometimes this phone just doesn't want to work so well doing that. Mm. Ah. And now I've got some chamomile tea. There's a little bit of a breeze blowing. Ah. It sucks being sick. But you know what? It's still a good day. Still a beautiful day. Get to talk to y'all. Got to be with, uh, got to be with the woman I love. Got to get some work done. Took the dog for a walk. All these things. Today is one year since my oldest son and I uh, arrived in Peru. And we... Mm, we went around Peru together for three and a half weeks and then he stayed after I left. Let me see if I can put the phone over here so it doesn't bounce up and down when I move. Mm, ah, here we go. I'll put it right here. See, an interesting thing happened yesterday at work. I was installing cork flooring in a hallway, and the client that I was installing the flooring for, uh, he came up to take a look at it when I was done, and he got upset because uh, I say he got upset. Maybe he wasn't really so upset. Maybe he was a bit perturbed. Maybe he was a bit uh, let down on his expectations. Um, but the flooring, one of the pieces, it was about that much. And now you can't see what that is on the phone. But it was about a quarter of an inch, not far enough in. And uh, it led to an interesting, very interesting ego experience. Um, no, we're all on this path, we're all on this path together, I don't have it all figured out, nobody has it all figured out, infinite waters, as beautiful as he is, he doesn't have it all figured out, but the cat down the road, Muji, doesn't have it all figured out, Eckhart Tolle, you know, all of these guys, all the women, involved in um, you know consciousness movements and everything like that all the people all the beings i like being better i like the I like saying the beings better than people because people is uh, a person is an expression of the ego without uh without ego involved there's no person but all of these beings they're all still on the path to I'm sure there may be some totally realized beings in this world. I'm sure there may even be some of them. But we're all just walking the path together. And some of us are shining our shining our lights in front and behind us, all around. In a, in a uh, multi-dimensional 
sphere of illumination. And it helps to light the path for others. Hmm. So, what happened? He got upset. He got upset that the floor wasn't far enough in and it wouldn't be covered by the threshold molding. And I knew that I had already done everything that I could to make it as good as I could. And I just told him that. I said, I said, this is, I could feel, I could feel like the adrenaline. Ad adrenaline? I could feel the adrenaline rising within me at this, this confrontation. Um, it's not such a happy feeling, but it's a feeling nonetheless that we end up going through. And I told him, I said, I said, I did everything that I could to, uh, to get it in there better. And I just, I just couldn't, couldn't do anymore. And uh, I looked at him, and well, he told me, he said, uh, I installed hardwood flooring uh, when I was growing up, and we never had threshold moldings, transition moldings, uh, between two types of flooring. It was going from cork flooring to carpet in the bedroom. He said, we never had that. The hardwood flooring just butted up to the carpet. And I told him, I said, yeah, I've installed hardwood flooring a lot too, and if it was hardwood flooring, I would have been able to do that. But with this stuff, I couldn't do it. And I just looked at him, and I took a breath, and I quickly looked at the feelings that that were coursing through me, the energy that was coursing through me from my adrenaline, and and I looked at my thoughts of that, and my first thought. Uh, my first thought was kind of along the lines of, like, you don't know who I am. <laughs> you know, that totally egocentric thought. So I watched that cloud float by in the sky. Mm. Then I watched another one float by that said, you don't know who you are either. Uh, all these different thoughts, all these different feelings. You know, they, they tend to they tend to come up and they, and they make us think of all of our failures. And sometimes we get stuck in those feelings. Mm. Sometimes we identify with them. Like it's so important. <laughs> yeah, it's work. And and uh, it makes money to pay the bills. But is it really that important? I mean, he could decide not to have me come back into his bathrooms. Not find more work. That's like if I if if I have work with him, cool. If I don't have work with him, okay too. That's cool too. Because like Okifoot says, everything always is, always was, always will be alright. But just because it's simple doesn't mean that it's easy. Hmm. At any rate, these emotions and these thoughts that floated by. I almost got caught. I almost got caught by them. Even after our discussion, it was still going. But during our little discussion, I just looked at him and I, and I said, This is me speaking to you with absolute honesty and transparency. I wanted it to be better than it ended up being. But I can do nothing about it to change it. And uh, uh, and he accepted that. He accepted that very graciously. It was just me just shedding every layer. And just, as Muji says, consciousness speaking to consciousness about consciousness. Well, it wasn't necessarily about consciousness, but kind of in some realm of consciousness. Um, so he went back downstairs and I kept, uh, kept doing my cleanup work that I was doing. And the whole time I had, I had floating through the sky of my mind, 
these thoughts of not being good enough or not doing a good enough job or what is this going to mean for the future you know are we going to end up being broke uh, totally broke and hungry again and um, which is something that has happened many many times in my adult life it's happened so many times that for the most part it doesn't even phase me anymore because um, I know that Everything always is, always was, always will be all right. But still, in my head, there was there was this like pounding, this pounding of inefficiency and self-loathing and self-deprecation, and um, it took me it took me maybe an hour, maybe a couple of hours for me to get out of it. Uh, what did I do to get out of it? First thing I did was work at being presently mindful. When there are when there are these emotions and these thoughts floating around, they take us away into another place in time. And if we're in another place in time, then how can we be consciously aware of the here and now? And if our happiness lies in the here and now, then to be in another place in time is really, uh, really a detriment to the self, uh, to the the infinite beingness that courses through this form and your form and this one here and even this lowly, horrible cigarette I'm smoking. And the big corporation just gave me the power to bring this cigarette to life. Maybe it's all their fault. <laughs> uh, played some guitar. Um, that was good. It's always good for, for helping to settle the mind and emotions. You know, if you have anything, any kind of art form or anything that, uh, that you do, do that. Anything that can, anything that can draw your mind away from trying to control everything of your senses, or not even controlling, but the mind, you know, the mind is a brilliant and wonderful servant, but it is a horrible and merciless master. And so we always need to, we always need to keep tabs on and what the mind is doing, and if the mind is controlling the self, and if the mind is controlling the awareness. Because the mind thinks that it knows so much. It knows so much. When really everything is known to everybody. Everything is known to every being. It's all in here, it just needs to be cleared away. Like, like a beautiful temple inside, having the dust and the ash removed from it. Um, I sing a, I sing a, no, I didn't sing this song, but it's a song that I wrote in another period of time, like this, a few weeks ago. Uh, and the end of the chorus says, uh, or part of the chorus says, Whenever I feel a little empty inside, I remember I am the universe in disguise. Uh, and it's just got, I don't know, it's got a pleasant little ring to it. Uh, it pulls, it pulls me back out of the personhood, out of being somebody. I don't like trying to be somebody. I, I spent so much of my life trying to be somebody, trying to be somebody special, trying to be somebody important. And, uh, but in that moment, I was able to say to my customer, just, this is, this was the best that I could do. And I can make, uh, make a transmi transition molding, I don't want to say transmission, make a transmission, automatic transmission molding, maybe six speed, I don't know, ting. I don't know what the fuck that was, because I don't know. At any rate, I told him I could make a transition molding out of the cork flooring, which I did today and installed it, and he was happy and everything's good. 
uh, back up on top, you know? <clears throat> but for that little bit of time, it was like, it was like I was the biggest failure. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> Um, the ego, the ego trip I was talking about, the ego was the part of me that was saying, you know, well, it's good enough and you had better accept it as it is, you know, because I'm, I'm this amazing carpenter or whatever, whatever the ego tries to play, the, the, the games the ego tries to play. Whenever you're feeling a little empty inside, just remember you're the universe in disguise. I don't, I don't know you, most likely. Most likely I've never seen you before in my life. But why should that keep me from loving you? And from paying to you this blessing of knowing your true self, knowing your value, knowing your worth, knowing your infinitude. It's really quite, quite amazing. And when we come to a point of, uh, of the ego and the mind trying to take control, hmm. That's when we need to just close our eyes. Close our eyes. Here, close your eyes right now. We'll practice. All right. All the thoughts you have floating around in your head, we're going to get rid of them. All right? I want you to close your eyes. I'm going to close mine too, which you shouldn't be able to see because your eyes should be closed. And we're just going to listen. All right now, I hear the wind through the leaves of the trees. And I hear the sound of the traffic on the parkway, not far from me. And I hear the dream capture that's on our porch over one of my favorite seats. And I hear it moving around, different pieces on it, fiddling together. It's not hitting the window right now. But it usually does, when it's a little breezy. Oh, there it goes. Uh, my eyes are open now. You can open your eyes. Look at what's in front of you. Don't try to name things. We try to name things, and when we do, we just, we further, or we don't, we don't try to name things. We already have named things. Um, but when we when we look at something and we have a thought of this is this or this is that we just further the we further the strength of duality when we can just look and appreciate the majesty and the amazement the amazing nature of everything that exists. <laughs> hmm. I say exists because what really exists that we can see? Nothing. Everything, everything that we can see ends up being nothingness again. Hmm. And how beautiful is that? The very nature of our transience in this realm, in this form. The simple idea that like everything of a material form, one day this form is not going to be able to contain, uh, contain the light anymore. It too will wither and die. 
to some people that's a horrible thing. To me, it's beautiful. So now it started as maybe like a four or five minute ramble just to make a video for the night. It's turned into 20 minutes. Uh, there's a there's a there's a me inside of me that uh, there are a lot of me's inside of me. <laughs> hmm. A lot of different people up in here, and at least one of them wonders: Is anybody ever going to see these videos? Are many people ever going to see these videos? Are people even going to care? Maybe nobody gives a shit. You know, maybe I maybe I babble inco incoherently, and nobody can follow. But you know what? Just doing the work of making these videos, it's fun. It's inspiring and self-inspiring. I'm just sitting here talking to myself. Talking to all of you. Talking to me. Hmm. I don't know. Sometimes I wish we had more of a... Uh, more of a multi-directional form of communication here than just me babbling for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Um, leave a message down in the comments. Leave some kind of comment. If you hated the video, leave that comment. It's not going to hurt my feelings. Um, like and subscribe, please. It'll, uh, it'll allow me to it'll allow part of the me inside of me to feel fulfilled in this venture but I know too that it's really not necessary if 7 billion people see these videos or only one person sees the video it's still the same as nobody seeing it but still being posted. That's the space I like to be in. That's the space I like to be in. People watch, it's cool. People don't, that's cool too. Just like work. I'm gonna leave you with this last little thing. Most days working uh, in this house where I've been working for the last month, the uh, the client or his stepson will come in and they'll make some kind of comment about the progress. And I turn to him and I say, one piece at a time, just like life. This whole life, this whole life that we live, it's one moment after another moment after another moment. Don't get so bogged down in the regret of the past or the fear of the future that you forget that all we ever have is right here in this exact moment I'm getting chills right now saying these these uh, these things it could be because I'm sick <laughs> it could be because it's freezing I think it's because it makes my makes my spirit makes my neshama makes it happy It makes my neshama happy to know that with every moment I die and am reborn. It even makes my neshama happy to know that someday, in some moment, I will die and not be reborn in this form. God willing, I shouldn't be for a long time in good health, but mm, I have no control over it. Neither do you. That's what makes it so precious, so beautiful. Enjoy and appreciate every moment with everybody in it. Love everybody. Release your anger. Drop it. Just drop it. Get rid of it. Anger can serve for a little period of time, but just like with sadness, you identify with it. If that anger becomes you, if you become the anger, well then your ship is sunk.
and it's going to take a lot of submarines to go down and pull it back up again, which can happen. It can happen. But it's a lot of work. Anyway, that's all I got. 25 minutes down now. <sighs> Maybe I'll make this faster. Maybe I won't. If you're watching, thank you. I love you. Shalom, shalom, salam, salam. Peace.